Hey everyone, this is Alex. This is my first uh, post on the topic of femoroacetabular impingement, or in other words, the problem that I have in my hips. So, for those who don't know, femoroacetabular impingement means that there's something going on in your hip that doesn't allow you a full range of motion and which has the uh, femur, the femoral head that is the top of your leg bone, your thigh bone, um, butting into hitting, bashing against the um, acetabulum, which is your hip socket. So if you think of the, the hip joint as a ball in rotating in a socket, uh, the socket is the femoral head and the acetabulum is the, uh, sorry, the, the, ball, the, the ball is the femoral head, the socket is the acetabulum. So I have uh, fem um, femoral acetabulum impingement, uh, which, just mean, which just means it's getting stuck, uh, on account of a cam lesion. Think of a, a bump, uh, a nasty bump, on top, that's, that's grown on top of the smooth bulb of the femoral head on both legs. And what that means is if I try to raise my leg or step or twist or, you know, do any kind of activity that is very common in, in a variety of sports and physical pursuits, um, the, instead of just rotating smoothly within the socket of, within the acetabulum, my leg bone basically bashes against the lip uh, of the, uh, bashes against it. Um, and rather bashes against the labrum, which is this uh, uh, cartilage uh, that keeps suppo supposed to keep everything moving smoothly. So I don't know how much damage there is, um, but what I do know is that something's not right. And what I do have is an x-ray, and the x-ray does reveal quite clearly the, um, that lesion, it's called a lesion, uh, it's growth, this, bony extra bit on top of the femoral head on both sides, but worse on the right. And these videos are going to be probably a little less informative than the blog posts, because uh, in the blog posts I have time to collect my thoughts and do some research and maybe link you to some stuff, but the videos are to fill you in on kind of where I'm at and how I'm feeling and what my thoughts are, and uh, in this video, um, you know, my, these are early days, I'm, I'm really angry. I'm angry because I've known for a long time that something's not right, or I had a sense at least, I didn't know if there was something wrong, but I had a sense that something wasn't right, because I've done an enormous amount of work on flexibility and just, you know, taking care of my body. I've I've spent so much time looking at ergonomics, I've bought materials, I've done exercises, I've tried yoga, I've tried pilates, I've gone to physiotherapists, I've gone to all manner of experts and specialists, and no one ever thought to examine my hips. I, I told all and sundry that I have a problem with flexibility, that I try to, you know, get beyond a certain point, and it's all the same bullshit that, you know, Ah oh, well, men are just less flexible than women. Bullshit. There's not. There's no reason that a person who does the exercises, who works on his flexibility, has a, has normally shaped hips, and is otherwise a healthy individual, should not be able to extend his flexibility um, even to the level of the splits. If you have a normal hip socket, if the acetabulum allows for a normal range of motion. If you can stand on one leg and place your leg on a table so that you, so the other leg is perpendicular uh, uh, to is uh, is at right angles to the other leg uh, while you maintain your torso straight, which most people can do, vast majority of people can do, um, then you can do the splits with training, of course, it, and it can be achieved, you know, in a matter of weeks or a couple of months. It's not something that takes years and years and years. But in my case, whenever I uh, went beyond a certain range, I started getting a lot of pain, and the pain was in my uh, was around the hip area. It manifested in uh, hypertension um, in my hamstrings, 
in tension in my low back, um, in uh, inflammation of the whole area, and um, you know, all it took for for us to arrive at a diagnosis of femoral acetabular impingement was one X-ray. So in all these years, no one has ever thought to send me for an X-ray and have a look at my hip and say, hmm. I wonder what that lesion is there on the top of your femoral head. I wonder if that might have anything to do with this thing that you're complaining about all these years. But no, this is, uh, this is our crappy healthcare system. And it really pisses me off when people extol the virtues of the Australian healthcare system as if it's some kind of paragon of what healthcare should be. It's not. Uh, the, 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 I mean, I don't know where, where healthcare really is that great, um, but it's certainly no, no better than a lot of other countries. And the most nauseating thing is hearing Australians talk about how much better it is than America because we get more free stuff. Well, the reason, when, when you say that you have a right to something, when you have a right to a service, then the people who render that service are your slaves. And there's no such thing as a free lunch. To give you an example, you think it's free treatment you're getting, but in order to make it at least halfway workable, other expenses uh, have to be extracted from you or from the people who want to make use of this healthcare system. So the scan that I really need in order to ascertain this is an MRI. So I phoned around to see where could I go and get an MRI scan, and they're all exactly the same price. Now that doesn't happen in a free market. In a free market, you've got some variety in price. Sure, they cluster around the mean, they cluster around that balance between um, you know what people are willing to pay and what the people who render the service uh, would like to charge that's just you know it's just supply and demand um, but you don't get exactly the same price everywhere you go unless you have price controls so I don't know but I'm gonna guess that there's some kind of licensing involved with MRIs and you, there's probably something that effectively means that there's a limit on the number of MRI machines that uh, can um, be in operation in the country so that cuts off supply and that drives up prices that introduces price controls uh, but then you can't get that but not uh, of course not every single test is going to get covered by by the government health the government funded healthcare system so I've got to pay hundreds of dollars out of pocket in order to get a simple scan that will give me the information that I've needed all these years. Now, if we had a free market, then you could get an MRI machine in every shopping center. You could just walk in, you wouldn't need a referral. And that's the other thing. You can't, you don't have, a, it, part, probably as part of the effort to control the demand um, uh, that uh, greatly exceeds the supply of these uh, machines, which are always booked out, um, you can only get to use it, you can only get a scan if you have a referral from a doctor or from a specialist. Now, in a free society, in a sane society, in a healthy society, you would get an MRI machine in every shopping center, you could just walk in, yes, yeah, 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 sign the waiver, whatever, um, and you could get a scan done as easily as you can go and get your eyes checked at uh, the local um, uh, glasses uh, store, you know, glasses store slash uh, resident eye doctor. You know, it's, and people say, oh, but they're such expensive machines. Well, you know, that's just the kind of economic literacy that you, you hear from people, usually on the left. So here I am after a decade of, of really trying to get a good sense of what my body needs and how to live a good life and how to live pain-free and how to, you know, not be beset by the kind of uh, uh, physical misfiring that, uh, that happens to a lot of people because they don't take, take care of their bodies. And here I am, well on the path towards arthritis for something that could have been diagnosed easily could have been treated years ago uh, and could have saved me hun hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars and years and years of frustration and misery. But um, there's not much I can do about that. So the next step is to get the MRI, get the prints, 
go to the doctor, get the referral, go to the specialist and take it from there. So, anyway, I've ranted for about 10 minutes, so if it's of any use to anyone, I hope, well, if it speaks to anyone, I hope this speaks to you. And uh, let me know what you think. Feel free to comment down below. Hit me up on Facebook or Google Plus. Check out my blog, um, faijournal.blogspot.com. Link, like this video, make a video response. Favorite if you really want to. Thanks for watching. And this is Alex, signing out.